Okay, now, the reason you want to have a machine shop available is because of the fact that you are going to need molds, molds for bullets, you are going to need molds for parts to repair your guns and your cars. You are also going to need to have a steady, um, you know, you're also going to need to have a uh, steady supply, uh, you know, of parts, uh, you know, machine uh, shop to repair the parts for, um, you know, for windmill, you know, for screws and windmills, for electrical wire, for any... You are living in a geared down technological 19th century society. You will be needing to repair uh, anything from, uh, you know, from garbage disposal to, uh, to sewer pieces to anything else. And in the event that you are, um, in the event that you are dealing with a post-apocalyptic society and you want to have some amenity of life, you know, for, uh, you also, here's, there's another couple of things you also want to siphon off. You want to go to your local, um, uh, remember, um, staying away from hospitals, uh, particularly in post-apocalyptic societies of any sort, is generally a good idea. However, some universities generally do have rather extensive chemistry labs. And if you happen to know what you're doing, and happen to know how to, at least to make uh, some of the basics, like acetosyl, like acid, ibuprofen, and you know how to make uh, certain types of antibiotics, um, preferably from, uh, and you know how to siphon them off, uh, preferably from uh, moldy bread or what have you, then... Um, you know, then being able to um, having a having a decent chemistry lab available will at least mean that in small quantities, it, it won't be on anything near an industrial level. But even a uh, but even a small qual uh, even a uh, a small size like a high school chem lab or a university chem lab will be sufficient to um, make extensive enough quantities of medicine, um, provided as well you can get enough of the initial chemical supplies in um, that you can. Uh, you know, that you can at least postpone uh, disease. You know, you can fight off basic diseases for another decade or so. Maybe less than that. But at least it will allow you to extend your medicine supply for at least a little bit longer. Um, note, uh, in this particular uh, section, uh, I would recommend getting, um, I would recommend on your way out of town, raiding every single pharmacy you can get your hands on, uh, you know, for prescription drugs and the like. And I would also recommend, amongst your group, finding a professional medical doctor uh, or somebody who, uh, you know, uh, I would recommend getting a professional medical doctor and a pharmacist on board, um, you know, rather than self-training yourself because the fact that this is, um, it is an area of expertise, unfortunately. So I would recommend getting a, a, I would recommend getting a GP available, um, you know, and rating every, the pharmacy for everything. So this way, um, you've still got somebody who's able to, uh, you know, help dispense medicine and the like in the event of. Now, rationing, of course, will be having to be cut. Um, go through the pharmacies first, and then on your second raid, um, okay, so let me give you this in sequential order, okay? You are confronted by a, um, okay, like I said, so all the tips I've given you before um, are the sort of things that you need to be looking for in general. Here's your procedure as to how to go for in the event that you get a post-apocalyptic fall. This is your scenario. You are woken up, uh, you wake up one morning, uh, you wake up one morning to discover that your computers have gone offline. Uh, your internet's not working, your TV's not working. Uh, on top of that, there is, um, you know, all societies collapse. There are a, a number of possibilities as to what you're dealing with. Look out your window. You can see either one of two things, uh, or one of three things. One, there's nobody there. That means that, uh, that uh, no, there's nobody there. Or there is, a, um, or there is everybody uh, with a whole bunch of floating wings and halos. If you are seeing people with floating wings and halos, you are already dead and you don't need to worry about this particular problem. You have been killed in a nuclear holocaust. This is not applicable to you. If you wake up one morning and you see the streets entirely deserted, that means chances are that, you, uh, chances are that people have already evacuated your area, which means you need to get the hell out of there quickly and find the nearest group, uh, at which point you will proceed on to the next uh, part of the scenario. Uh, at which point you will automatically proceed on to steps uh, to the um, to the part uh, for preparations, which I will get to eventually, the end part of the scenario, or the start of the uh, the preparation of uh, of post-apocalyptic life scenario. Um, if you are woken up and you see people shambling about like this, chances are you are dealing with zombies. Zombies. Use the zombie survival guide and the various techniques in order to be able to get out of the city. Then move to a power plant and move to the post-apocalyptic survival guide. If you are moving out there, but you see people just running at you, but they don't look like they're zombies, that means chances are you've dealt with the post-apocalyptic society when people are rioting, and people are still trying to riot and loot, and they'll probably be trying to attack your house. At this point, you are dealing with a human enemy. You need to be more sophisticated in order to be able to handle them. So I'm going to teach you a couple of techniques in order to be able to handle them. Number one, groups of five or more humans are a dangerous group. Um, they take over something which is called mob mentality. And when mob mentality happens, mobs are easily able to be segregated as long as you are a well-trained fighting force. However, if you are an individual, a mob is generally a very dangerous thing to get around. So I would recommend keeping a firearm in your place anyway to be able to take out zombies. The, uh, take out zombies or and or mobs. Um, 
Actually, mobs and zombies, when they get in fairly close quarters, are about the same thing as a, as a mob anyway, but the difference is that a mob is considerably more dangerous, and you can see it coming from a lot farther distance. The second thing you want to do, uh, if you're dealing with either a zombie group or a mob, you want to make sure that your escape routes are planned. Unfortunately, unlike uh, most zo uh, zombies, kind of wither too, uh, you know, are, are kind of slow and shambly uh, after about the uh, you know after rigor mortis is set in. For the first couple of minutes, they are running like a regular mob, which means you need to be damn sure that you know how to escape these guys. Plan your route in advance um, and and take it as if it's for a human mob. This way, um, you know that if you've got it dealt with for a human mob, the chances are zombie mobs will be secondary and easily are more able to deal with. Uh, remember as well that humans are highly more intelligent, which means that you need to be able, um, which means that uh, the standard techniques that work for zombies, like you know trying to lead them to the door, making them think you're still there and go, then going out the back door, won't work. A, zo a human mob will figure out that you, where you're going and try to circumvent, which means you need a route off your roof or off uh, an escape point somewhere in advance. Chances are also keep an eye on the news. If it looks like things are going, uh, you know, are starting to get steadily worse, do not fall into the assumption like, oh, maybe it'll get better or something like that. You know. Um, when we're dealing with a post-apocalyptic fall due to uh, technology collapse or something like that, we will be seeing a state of, of worsening economic uh, of economic effects, and people will always be believing it's, it's going to get better. It's like that whole uh, global uh, global warming, global cooling myth. Uh, remember that whole thing where people thought that we were going to be headed into an ice age, so not to worry about it? Don't necessarily believe what the press is saying about that. But if there is things are steadily getting worse, and maybe there's a micro improvement, but things start getting worse again after a while, then you know that the initial problem is still there, like with global warming. Anyway, uh, that's another side note. Um, the next thing you want to do is plan your escape route. Uh, this is um, re regardless of whether or not you've gone through uh, scenario A, B, C, or D, um, you know, uh, so far. You, this is now your post-apocalyptic survival training manual. Um, a map of where you want to go. I don't have a map available, but I want you to uh, I want you to visualize this effectively. So, um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go grab a pen and a piece of paper, and then I'll explain to you exactly what's going on here. Okay, uh, here we go. Piece of paper, a pen. Let's see if this is still usable. Damn, this pen's out of ink. Um, no matter, we'll just have to use pencil. I think. No, that one's out of lead. Got to be a pen, a pen here somewhere. Here we go. Found a pen and a piece of paper. Now allow me to demonstrate for you what we're going to be needing to deal with. Okay, so two minutes, eighteen seconds left on this video, and I'll uh, continue this in part three. Okay, so here's my piece of paper. I'm going to draw it from here. Okay, assuming that we are dealing with a standard street map here. Just let me. Uh, this. Okay. This square represents your town. Can you see this clearly? Okay, good. Yes. Your house is here. I'm marking it off with an X. Okay. This is where you are. Uh, okay. Actually, no. Scratch that. Um, that's assuming you live on the edge of town. You'll be easily able to escape. Uh, actually, no. There are two scenarios. I'm going to put X sub 1 and X sub 2. The reason I'm doing X sub 1 and X sub 2 is that assuming X sub 1 is up here, X sub 2 is down here. If you are living at X sub 2, we will work a separate scenario for you. Uh, because of the fact that you will be, chances are, you're going to be in the middle of a, of a mob already, and it's going to be considerably more difficult for you to get out of the city. If you are in X sub 1, uh, you will be easily able to get out of the city, but unable to get to areas where your supplies are. So, uh, there are two scenarios that we're going to work with here. Um, assuming there are three areas that you want to hit, one of which is your... Um, okay, uh, I'm going to put a, a little bit of a... Um, a badge here to symbolize your police. Um, the cross here will symbolize a hospital. Um, I'm going to do a little uh, pill thing, probably near somewhere here. Um, okay, that's that thing that looks like a piece of shit is actually a pill, um, which symbolizes pharmacy. Um, okay, uh, let's see here. Your your library. Um, just give me a sec here. Okay, I can't draw a book very well, but let's just assume that this is uh, assuming that this is it. Um, your university uh, will I'll just draw a U for. Um, we'll put that say over here. Okay, now this is you. Um, okay, so let me uh, let me demonstrate this uh, by getting this closer. Uh, actually, you know what? I'll just explain this better in the next video.